Australia is known for some of the most iconic, cute, fluffy, and sometimes even deadly native animals. Some that instantly come to mind are the koala, the kangaroo, the Tasmanian devil, the platypus, the kookaburra, and some of the most deadly snakes and spiders around the world. But there's always one that sort of goes under the radar. It sort of slips everyone's mind. It looks somewhat like a little bear. It's the wombat. It eats mainly grass and roots. It lives in burrows under the ground. Something that's quite unique and funny about them is they have square shaped poo. <laughs> they're born hairless, which is adorable, and live in their mother's pouch. Now the oldest and largest wombat in captivity is Patrick, who is 30 years old and lives at Ballarat Wildlife Park. Now you might be wondering what's so important about wombats. Well, there are three species of wombats in Australia. The northern hairy nose, which lives in Queensland, the southern hairy nose, which is found mainly in South Australia, and the bare nose wombat, which was formerly known as the common wombat. And it spreads across New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. Now, all three of these species have suffered population decline over the years due to hunting, dog attacks, urban development and disease. One disease in particular would be sarcoptic mange, which affects two of the three species. It affects the bare nose wombat and the southern hairy nose wombat, which is probably a good thing because what causes the mange is a mine. And if it found its way into the small population of northern hairy nose wombats that are left, the species would probably be wiped out. So, Sarcoptes scabiae is the name of the mite, and it infests over 104 mammals worldwide. This includes dogs, livestock, important wildlife, and even humans. In humans, it's called scabies. So what happens is the mite buries into the, the wombat's skin and causes the, the skin to get all scabby and crusted and goes over the eyes and the ears of the wombat, which basically leaves the wombat defenseless. The wombat then scratches, which causes secondary infections, for example, blood poisoning, and inevitably the animal dies. It is very hard to treat this because there is no vaccine. There is a topical ointment, however, it is very hard to treat an entire species with this because the mite is transferred via contact. So it is thought to be brought in by Eu um, European settlers. However, there is no, not, there's limited in-depth research um, supporting this is becoming a very serious problem with localised extinction. So without the DeLorean project, I probably wouldn't have had the freedom and opportunity to, opportunity to work with so many amazing scientists at the University of the Sunshine Coast. One, but one in particular would be Tamika Fraser, who was my supervisor. Um, together we worked through samples of mites ranging from wombats that were healthy and super mangy, and we identified the number of mites associated with the disease. What we found is that the process used to take these samples was not 100% effective, which means that early diagnosis and possibly treatment was, is lost. This is a real world project and I am so proud and honoured to be part of this. It is not every day a 15 year old can say that she's identified mites down in the microscope, conducted DNA extractions and understands DNA sequencing for a real world problem. It is our job it is our responsibility to look after these beautiful creatures. And at the moment, we're actually doing a pretty horrible job. These creatures are looking at the possibility of that being extinct in 100 years. In for so we can't study them. We can't look at them. We don't need a repeat of the Tasmanian tiger or anything else that has gone extinct for that matter. This has been a truly enlightening and eye-opening experience, and I wouldn't change it for the world. It may not be the traditional ed educational system, but I have learned so much about about mange and the skills I have gained, something that you wouldn't learn in school. Thank you for listening.